Okay, so we've covered phase one. Now I want to show you a little bit about phase two. The beginning of phase two training in my training program always starts using the round pen. If you don't have a round pen, you can lunge, but the round pen is certainly ideal because in a perfect world, we want to turn the horse loose. This gives us an idea of, to assess what the horse runs like, which lead they favor, or my father likes to say whether they're right-handed or left-handed. So what I want to do is bring the horse in the round pen. Again, this is a horse who has already good manners on it, general manners and behavior from phase one. I want to turn the horse loose. I'm going to leave the halter on. I want to put my lead rope right down here, or you can go hang it on the fence. So now I'm going to turn the horse loose. I'm going to send the horse off the first time in the direction they typically like to go, which is counterclockwise. So typically a horse comes into a ring or an arena and they are, their typical lead is to go counterclockwise. So I'm going to send my horse off that direction. And what's important here is that when I ask her to change, the horse always turns towards me. Now for this exercise, all I need for the horse is the uh, webbing halter and I have a lunge whip. I prefer a lunge whip. If you have a carrot stick or stick and string from some of the other clinicians, that's fine. Don't go out and spend a lot of money. I don't want you to have to do that. But I do, I do prefer a lunge whip or called a lash whip. I'm, I'm much better with it. And um, so this is what I'll be using. We're gonna send Lady off. You're gonna push him off. However you get him going, you want him to get started in the ring. Okay, so I want her to get going. You're going to put your hand out and send them in the direction you want to go. I'm going to clock. Now I want Lady to go a little faster, so I'm going to snap my whip. If you have a stick and string, you need to kind of just get up behind them with it. Hop. Hop. Now I'm going to ask Lady to change. Good. Change directions. Good. That was very nice. And I do not change the whip in my hand. I'm right-handed. It's my strength. The horse knows when I'm in a position of strength, and I do not have strength with my left hand with the whip. I'm a right-handed person. Now again, we're going to ask her, we're going to keep the whip out, call her to you, walk around behind, and ask them to keep going. Same thing. Good. Hop. You're keeping the whip just about their flank. If you want them to, um, if they're running along nicely, you can lower the tip of your whip down to the ground. You're walking in about a five foot diameter circle right in the center of the ring. This is a little smaller round pen than most of you have. This is about a 40 foot round pen because I'm using this round pen also to practice my liberty training that I do in shows. Also, I work a lot with miniature horses and with the miniatures, it's much easier to work with them in the little 10 foot smaller ring. Good. All right, lady, change. I'm going to walk around behind her and get my whip. At that point, you want to get your whip behind her. We'll try to show you this in slow motion so you can see. Whip here, pull down, back up, walk forward, put your whip out. What you don't want to do is allow the horse to come so close to you that if they kicked, they could kick you. So you can push them away, walk into them and push them away. That's a waltz. Lady knows how to waltz. Go on. Good. That's why you have a whip. Whips aren't intended to hurt horses. The reason we use a whip is that our arms are only about three feet long. If my arms were six or eight feet long, I'd just reach out and push the horse over, push her this way, guide her that way. I'd be a funny looking person if that were the case, but it would be useful for horse training. So we use tools. One of those tools we use are different size whips carrot stick, the string, whatever you call it, a stick and string. And what it does, it allows me to reach out and reach the horse. In the instance I just showed you, lady crossed over, my horses have a tendency to come close to me for the type of work I do in the exhibitions. If I were merely training a horse for pleasure or somebody who didn't do the type of work I did, I wouldn't allow them to come that close to me. And as soon as they changed, I would bring my whip out here but I would immediately put my whip out and walk into them to get them back over there. So I wouldn't allow them to brush right by me because if they kick on a cold day and they're feeling good, they're going to be too close to you. So make sure, this is a little bit long lash whip. You can get them a little bit shorter and you might be comfortable. So find what works for you, experiment a little bit, 
and see what works for you. Okay, so we saw Lady Dancer in the round pen. And now, as I always will do throughout our training, I want to show you how it's done with a horse who doesn't do it quite as well. Now, Gypsy is a trained horse. She does work in my Liberty Act, but she's a very nervous little horse, and I can usually count on her to do things backwards the first few times, so I'm hoping that's the case today. So we can show you what happens when they turn the wrong direction. So Gypsy, I'm gonna take Gypsy's lead rope off here. Now Gypsy's also got her halter on. I like to leave their halter on. I'm using the same equipment, the same uh, tool, the same whip, so that I can get Gypsy to move around the ring. Okay, now again, I've done this a lot, so if you're more comfortable, go ahead and take your lead rope and put it outside the uh, arena if you're afraid you're gonna be tripping over it. Nothing worse than falling down in the middle of your training session. <laughs> Been there. Okay, Gypsy. All right, so we're gonna send Gypsy off. Good. Gypsy's a little American miniature horse. Hop, let's have her canter, hop. Good, hop. Now I'm gonna ask Gypsy to turn towards me, hop. Hop, Gypsy here, Gypsy here. Oh, see, no good. Okay, so what we wanna do there, you wanna send them on. Make them go the way they were going. Don't allow them to turn the wrong direction. Gypsy here. No. Go on, Gypsy. Go on. Good. Gypsy up. Good. We're going to make her run. Going to ask her again. Gypsy here. Good. G up. No. Go on. I'm going to ask her. Gypsy here. Good. Gypsy, go on. That was very good. Good girl, Gypsy. I'm purposely kind of trying to make her turn the wrong direction for you so you can see what happens. Okay, now we're going the opposite way. Mo, oops, nope, go on, Gypsy. It's important they keep going. She wanted to turn back before I asked her to because I was just gonna tell you, most horses don't like to go the opposite way in the ring. All horses are a little different. That's why we're turning them loose. We wanna see which lead they favor, which direction. But they still must do it if we're asking it. I'm gonna ask her to change back. Gypsy, change. Up. Oh. Nope, go on. Gypsy, nope. Gypsy, go on. Go on. Run him around a little bit further. Gypsy, nope. Good girl, Gypsy. This is great. Good. Gypsy here, change. Good. Okay, just like that. So we keep chasing them the way we sent them off initially. They don't get to decide. And then we're going to ask them to change. If they don't change towards us, if they don't turn the direction we want them to turn, we keep going the way they were going. Go up a little further, regroup. When you're ready, ask them again. The key is though, don't wait too long to ask them to turn after they haven't turned the right direction or they'll get smart. They'll never turn the right direction for you because they get a, a way to uh, get out of it. Hop, gypsy up. Good, hop. Change, good. I happen to say change. You can say whatever you like. But do use some type of command here. And make sure you always use the same command. I say change because later on in my routines, I'm gonna ask them to waltz and volte and do some other things. So I want my cues to be um, universal. I want it to be all the horses we train in our family are trained the same. And I also wanna be able to add on, do a lot of other tricks. So I wanna make sure I'm using a cue that they're not gonna use for something else. Hop, nope, go on, gypsy, go on, good girl. Now she's tired, so more than anything, she'd like to stop. But we're gonna ask her change. Good girl, go on. Now you see, Gypsy doesn't come as close to me. She changes on the rail. Change, good, hop, go on. Good, now you wanna change more often when they start to get it down. Change, good girl. And that'll be, well, a week or so beyond when you start. They're not gonna be able to do these changes right away. They should change towards you the first day, but give them a lot of time to figure that out. These changes where you're doing a lot of changes in a short period of time, something you're gonna work up to. You don't always need the voice command. That's where, oh, nope, late. Gypsy go on. Gypsy right here, I'm gonna make her do it now. Gypsy here, nope. Gypsy here, nope. Gypsy chain, nope. Nope, go on. Gypsy chain, nope. I don't want to run her too far because she's playing a game with me now. Go on. Gypsy change. Nope. Here. Gypsy here. Nope. Gypsy go on. Gypsy go on. Hop. 
Gypsy, go on, good girl, hop. Gypsy change, good, that's a girl, hop. Hop. Gypsy change, good, go on, hop. And now I'm going to show you what I do with my horses, and this is more advanced. The way we stop, whoa, here. Drop my whip. If you're inclined to turn your back to them, that's fine. I don't. Gypsy here. And I'm going to stand here. I'm going to cluck and ask her to come to me. Now, your horse will likely not come this close to you. Gypsy's done this a few times. But wherever they stop and face you, let them stand. Let them blow for a few seconds and pet them. The one important thing is they must keep their head towards you. Don't let them look off that way and that way. Make them, Gypsy. Good, you can pat your, your leg. You can reach out and pull them towards you, but don't let them look around. And that's round penning.